Hi, I'm Nolene Cleave. I'm a printmaker with a studio in Cormacay in Cape Town. Addicted to Art has asked me to do this lesson to inspire and help people to learn about different types of art. So I'm going to show you some ideas for doing reductive monotype. First I set out all my materials. I'm using oil paints today. I have some petroleum jelly ready for buffing my plate, some turpentine, a couple of rollers. I like using a sponge roller for monotype, but I also have a hard roller. And then for printing, I have spoons and a baron. Masking tape. I've cut a frame. You can cut that out of thin cardboard. I have paper which is lightweight and smooth for hand printing. I have fabric, stencils which are cut or torn, string, feathers, a variety of drawing tools. Also some cotton buds as well as some handmade tools sponges and some rag. I start off by buffing the plate with a touch of petroleum jelly and some pigment. You can also use a little dishwashing liquid or some gum arabic. I prepare the ink on the glass next to my plate and then roll down and across in order to get a nice layer of colour. I'm working with a photograph that I've converted to black and white and printed out on computer paper and in order to just get a structure or a skeleton of where I'm going to work, I'm tracing through the paper and it will lift the paint on the actual plate. Then I begin to remove the ink or paint from the plate using because it's an oil-based paint, I'm using a little turps with a cotton bud. I'll also use a paintbrush and I work slowly and just see how much paint I want to remove. I can add again if I want to, just to work the contrasts. Please forgive my bumping of my makeshift lockdown camera rig. Also using a bit of cloth to remove and because I want to be more direct and precise with my marks I'm wrapping it around the back of a paintbrush.
here I'm using just a putty rubber so I like it because it can mold to whatever shape I want it to mold to um, and I have to keep squeezing it and turning it so that um, you know, I find a clean section to work with. One can also work with squeegee tools, you can work with dry brush, whatever will remove the medium that you're working with. Here I'm finding the registration and working, drawing on top so that uh, the ink adheres to the back of my photocopy paper. Remember that pressure makes a difference to the lightness or darkness of the line. So try different tools as well. I'm also removing with a feather which gives a lovely texture and then in keeping with the botanical theme I'm going to use a leaf as well here I'm using tarlatan and just getting a little bit of texture there as well here I'm using dry brush The back of the leaf is better than the front because the veins are more pronounced and prominent so it gives the texture beautifully and one can use a leaf or whatever stencil you use in different ways. Here I'm using the negative shape of it. You'll notice I'm only working in a single color but when I print I am going to print onto a piece of paper that I've already rolled a second color onto. I've rolled it onto the plate, printed it onto the paper and then I'll be printing over printing this red onto that paper. I roll down with a hard roller just to stabilize and then with the baron pressing as hard as I can to get good pressure. The back of a flat metal spoon is good and then my edges I do with my finger just to clarify. important to have the paper taped down so that you don't lose registration. I look at the print and I see oh I need a little bit more contrast in the middle so I'm wetting with terps again and also adding a little bit of, um, of oil paint back into the image. Be careful that it's not too wet. If it's too wet, it's going to splodge on your page. Painting directly onto the leaf stencil. And over printing like that. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you'll experiment a bit as well. Remember just start and as Thomas Carlyle said, go as far as you can see. When you get there you'll be able to see further.
Enjoy.